Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training where we want to give you the training that you need to tackle projects like this one on your own. Ken Training is the channel where we use DIY skills and tools and materials and we try to achieve professional grade results with that level of talent that we bring to the table. Today's project is going to be laminating a tabletop. Let me show you the project right now. Okay, here are the materials for the project. Now, because this table has a front and a back, we're looking at the back side now. You can tell because of this brace right here. The side on the other side does not have the brace, which is the front of the table. This particular table is going to be up against the wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a flat section, which I have right back here, uh, right there in the middle. See that flat section? That's going to go on this leg right here. And the bull nose is going to go on this side, the front of the piece, and then also on the other side over there. Um, and for the tabletop, I already I'm going to use this piece right here, and of course we're going to use the uh, the original uh, solvent. You can check out my channel on where I do a comparison analysis of how well this holds up against the water base. But this product, I can already tell you, is the slam dunk winner. Um, even though I've got the water base uh, back here in the garage somewhere. So we're not going to be using that. That's why we want to come outside for the project because when you use the original solvent, it really, uh, it's flammable. So uh, you want to be in, a, uh, you either want to shut the natural gas off to the house and I have a natural gas water heater right there. So I want to do the project outside where I'm more well ventilated. I've already taken my orbital sander with an 80 grit and I've already uh, sanded down the tables and also I cleaned it off uh, with uh, paint thinner. So the, the uh, project is actually ready to go. The first piece that we want to put on is this piece right here. So let's, uh, let's get the uh, contact cement on right now. Okay, we have our surface prepped and ready to go. Everything is wiped down and I keep the uh, contact cement in this container because I have a, a roller in there and a brush so they're always uh, maintained in, in the uh, liquid contact cement so it's easy. Okay, I can put my timer on here for 16 minutes. Alright, we still have about 6 minutes left on our timer but I've already uh, tested the piece and the piece is actually ready to go. I know that it's ready to go because when I take my finger and I put it into it, there's no glue residue coming down on my finger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the piece, make sure that I have good coverage all the way around, and I'm just going to get the piece, make sure I've got overlapping everywhere, and I do have overlapping everywhere. Okay, now I'm just J rollering. The end of the edge piece here is bonded to our table. Now I've got the router set up. I've got some eye protection over here and I've got some hearing protection. I've got my router set up with the with the laminate router bit that we're going to use for the project. I'll leave links for the uh, tools, uh, the router bit in the uh, description if you would like to purchase it. but. Uh, Basically, it's a flush trim bit and it's made for uh, laminates and so forth. One thing you want to keep in mind is generally you want to try to go in a counterclockwise direction when you're doing this type of work. It, supposedly, it just makes it cleaner um, for the cut, although I don't think it makes a dramatic difference, but I do think it is more appropriate to try to go in that direction. I'll probably go in both directions just to make sure I'm perfect all the way around. Now I am going to take some 80 grit sandpaper with just a 2x4. 
Now I'm just going to take a file and just if there's any burr left from the routering left over I'm just going to hit the the edges around the perimeter just to make sure that everything is nice and smooth. Okay so this piece is completely set and ready to, uh, to go. I've got the, it all filed down give you a nice detail of how that turns out and it you know it comes out pretty good everything is like uh, perfectly flat it's uh, you know well bonded to the table. Got the tabletop completely prepped for the contact cement it's all wiped down and sanded and good to go, ready to apply contact cement. Okay, it's only been about six minutes. The project's drying out a little bit faster. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm just lining up my piece, making sure I have overhang all the way around. Then I start in the center and then work my way out to make sure that I'm totally um, got coverage all the way around. Then I just go ahead and roll the piece out and make sure that I'm bonded. And when I roll, I make sure that I don't roll over the edge. All right, for this job, I'm gonna use two different router bits, okay? So I have my router here set with one of my flush trim router bits, which is this bit right here. And I am gonna go ahead and use that bit first, just to give you a nice zoom on what that looks like. And just let me rotate it slowly so you can kind of see what that um, design looks like. And I cleaned the blade just using some extra Formica like this to make sure that there was no glue residue on the, on the uh, cutting blade there prior to this. So we're going to do the section of the job that has the Formica, which is right here on this side. That has one for Mike edge because because that's going to be one flat edge. The other edges are going to be the bullnose. So what we're going to do on the on the bullnose section, we're going to use this router bit. It's just got a bearing, uh, a top bearing on it. So I want to or uh, that's the one that I want to use because it's it'll just be a little bit smoother of a cut. So we're going to get going right here and we're going to router out just this one face right here which is the back of the table. Okay now that that one see this the how I put the masking tape on the edges to make sure it doesn't uh, it doesn't cause the edge pieces to get chipped so I protect my two edges with masking tape and uh, and then I put Vaseline along the section where the router bit r r uh, r r runs and I do that in an effort to prevent burn through when I use when I do that cut. Now I won't need to use the masking tape or the Vaseline on this section or the front section because there's no Formica on the edges to protect. So I'm going to switch over my router bits right now and I'm going to uh, get this router bit in play. Okay, the router bit's been changed out. I've got the bearing on there. There's the one that I removed. Okay, now that I'm routered out, I'm going to go ahead and uh, J-roller one more time because now I can go right up to the edge without worrying about breaking the Formica. All right, now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and take some files and I'm just going to file down the Formica edge here. Here is a close-up of the edge that I just got done filing down. This here is a sample piece that I made up per before this project and see that joint right there? That joint is off by like 1 32nd of an inch and it is noticeable. So when you do these cuts for your 45s, you really got to be like dead on. Okay, I want to show you this. Oh, and by the way, when you do this particular style bullnose, uh, this rib here on mine goes at the bottom. See how uh, tight that joint is? If you flip it 180 degrees, you know, it's, it's, it's subtle, but this joint does not look as tight as this joint here. This looks the tightest. 
basically what you're trying to do when you're lining up your piece is you want that 45 degree to line up exactly at that edge when you're pressing against it. So when you're holding your piece in place like this here, you're making sure that this 45 degree angle right there is just perfect while you're uh, marking for the opposite side over there. Why, while you're holding your piece in place at the exact section to the 45, that's when you're marking your left hand side and then shaving off a small amount till you get it just the size that you want. It's a time consuming process to get it just right. Of course I have a little forgiveness in the back of the, this piece because this is going to go up against a wall so this side over here won't I have forgiveness if there's some slop I can make this joint up here tight and if there's anything left over back here it's okay, it'll be okay it'll be less noticeable okay so what I'm gonna do here is make sure my piece is correct and it is and you know what I might as well write down that this is gonna be the left hand side and I'll put an arrow pointing up so this is the left hand side of my project I have this 45 degree cut over here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up so that this 45 is exactly where I want it which is right about here would be just perfect and then while I'm holding this piece in place I'm gonna come over here on the opposite side and now I'm gonna mark that with the pencil. Now I have a pencil cut and theoretically I should be able to shave off just the pencil and it should be just perfect to, to this size here. Now I'm just gonna go to my chop, my chop saw and just make the cut. Alright, it's starting to get a little dark on me here but I got my type on type 2 and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, glue this piece in so I can get this set up overnight. I got a couple of clamps here on top and I'll show you everything after I get it glued down. Okay so the project has been sitting overnight and what I'm going to do now is pull the tape and pull off my two clamps. Okay so there's step one. I cleaned up this edge here and you can see that that joint looks very tight. It's a nice tight joint okay. So now we want to get the uh, next piece in which is uh, going to be this front piece. Okay, I've got the piece perfectly cut to fit in this section here. I'm going to put the uh, glue on right now and get it attached right to the piece. Okay, so you may have noticed how I pretty much taped like the whole seam here because I wanted to, if anything, I wanted to over tape, not under tape, because I want my seam to be 100% tight to my project so that I don't have any gap at all. Alright, our table has been sitting for nine hours undisturbed. Now I want to get this last piece on, which is right here. To, to glue right here then I can set the table up put the clamps on it and leave it overnight and then tomorrow uh, everything should be oh, I can remove the clamps remove all my tape now I don't want to remove this tape here until tomorrow morning Okay, there you have it. We are completely clamped, taped down, 
you can see how tight I've got that seam. I've got that seam 100%. So even, you know, it's in place exactly where I want it. So there's nothing to do. All we have to do now is just leave the table overnight. We'll re revisit it tomorrow, remove the clamps, and go to town. Okay, in this section here, I've already removed the clamps and I was just removing the tape and the tape was so brittle that it kept causing me a problem. So here you can see I've got the heat gun and that was releasing the adhesive off of the tape so I could take it off so the whole thing, the, this section of the project moved along quickly. Okay, so this is the back of the table and on each end I have one of these where there's an open there's a cut a clean cut there and i want to make that kind of blend in with the um, substrate next to it i have some spray paint here and i want to try to mix up a silver grayish type concoction okay so what i did was is i took the three spray paints right there and i just took an old cardboard box and threw and mixed and just threw the spray paint there in the corner then I just used this paper towel and then I um, applied it to the section of the project corners. Okay, let's pull the tape off and see what it looks like and see how well it blends in. There you go. Yeah, I don't think that is, no one's going to catch that. When you're standing back here and just looking at it, um, I don't think that's going to call out to attention. Yeah, I think we're perfectly fine here. Yeah, let me show you a back shot. So when you're back here just looking at the table like this, the two end pieces that I just did are just not calling to attention to you. At this point in time, if your table was just going to be on the put on the interior of the home, you would could you could stop your table is completely finished. But here at Ken Training, we are going the extra step and we are going to make this table waterproof because I want this table to be put outside where it's going to receive weather and rain and so forth. Okay the table is completely taped up. You can see the way I've got the seams. This is the back of the table. Just to give you a detailed shot of that on how I am going to be epoxying all that section. This here's the front of the table and here is the close-up shot of how where the epoxy is going to go. But basically, I'm just covering up all the seams um, for the project. So this way, when the epoxy cures out, hopefully those seams will be 100% waterproof. When you tape your seams with uh, your blue tape, before you apply your epoxy, you want to clean your, um, your work area with the seams with either some type of cleaner like denatured alcohol, rubbing alcohol, paint thinner, anything like this in order to make sure that that the area is as clean as possible. There's no oils from your fingers or anything like that. So when you put the epoxy down, it's the best cure possible to the Formica. It has not quite been an hour yet um, since I mixed up the epoxy. I'm about seven minutes away from an hour. And here is the epoxy that I mixed up. And you can tell just by moving it like this, how liquid of a state it's still in. So basically I'm just going to do that same technique in, that I did for this corner around the entire uh, section that's taped off. Alright, I've gone around the entire table. You can see how everything is still wet and I still have a lot of epoxy. Uh, left over you can see that right there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my timer for 45 more minutes that's what the time is now it's been about an hour since I mixed up the uh, the epoxy so what I'm gonna do is just wait about 45 more minutes and I'm gonna give this a second coat just to make sure that while I'm at this stage I give it a really good coat and after that I can pull the tape okay it's the next day the epoxy is cured and when you're just looking at the table like this you really can't see much because it looks like the same table, right? But as I do a really tight zoom in here and get you right in on the seam, you can see that epoxy right there, although it's very, very, very subtle. Um, 
but there's right at the seam there is there is epoxy all right when you look on this side you can see how the epoxy I guess I had a heavier buildup see it was it's hard to tell when you got the tape on it because it's clear epoxy and it's a little hard to see but you can see where the buildup was heavy enough where it kind of dripped down a little bit right there but for the most part and right there too you can kind of see that but that's with me doing a real tight zoom when you back out like this and you just simply look at the table you really don't notice it this is I just put this um, sample piece on top so you could get a contrast this sample piece here was one that's completely covered in epoxy and it has a very shiny uh, surface to it and I didn't want to I didn't I did not want to do that um, with this table because I wanted to well, first of all I didn't want to use up that much epoxy secondly um, it theoretically isn't necessary this should be waterproof just the laminate on its own the Formica on its own so um, this should be a good sound strategy so when this table sits outside and I'm just out in the in the wild here in the environment and it gets rained on um, this should hold up well I'll be able to test this table through the test of time but there's one more thing I have to do before I want to put this table into service and I'll show you what that is alright I just have the table flipped upside down in my garage and you see right let me show you with the uh, zoom here right where I have this um, there's a seam right there right where I'm pointing to right there that is a potential um, area where moisture and stuff can accumulate and get in there and I, I want to make sure that I am in a very uh, solid condition so I don't have you can see that lip really good right there so let me just show you uh, right there that seam right there is I wanna put a, some protection so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this 100% uh, pure silicone and I am which is waterproof at the same time and I'm gonna go ahead and um, seal up that that seam all the way around the table uh, and then let that sit overnight let the silicone cure out and then we will be in a very good condition to put this table in service. Okay, the silicone is all cured out. This table is 100% ready to be put back in service. Everything's good. Okay, so here's the, uh, the front door to the house. And just outside the walkway here, this is where I'm placing the table. Now, I actually have two tables. And I built both tables, okay? This table over here is made out of an epoxy top. And you can check out my channel if you want to see me um, building uh, epoxy uh, tabletops. But that one's totally waterproof because it's got epoxy all over the entire top. And then the legs for this one, I just bought those online for like for $35. Now this table here, you know that we just built the whole thing from scratch. Um, the wood was just two by threes uh, uh, wood material that's got one coat of primer two coats of paint so everything is protected underneath and then on the Formica you know that it's waterproof because I epoxied my seams and then siliconed underneath the drip edges so that this table here is as waterproof as possible here is a shot of the top of the the uh, table that we just made and here is a shot of this table here please let me know in the comments below if you like the epoxy design better or if you like the Formica design better which table do you think looks better the this table the Formica table or this table the epoxy table okay that's going to wrap up this video if you got some tips from this video and you found that there was some value here please smash that like button down for me and subscribe to my channel Ken Training and I will catch you on the flip side.